So God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Three words in that sentence are crucial. Love, give, life. God loved, so God gave, that we might live. Each word is is mystery-laden, but the mystery has been somewhat unveiled. So a word on each word. God is love is what the first letter of John says. You can have all sorts of philosophical fun and games with that three-syllable sentence. Of no one else can you say that he or she is love. No one. You can be uniquely loving and lovable. You can love everybody from the depths of your heart, always, everywhere, with everyone. And still, we can never say of you that you are love. You are loving, perhaps. You love someone, perhaps. But you are love? That's a state of being that's grammatically incorrect. Because only God exhausts the total meaning of love. In the prayer on the contemplation for divine love from the spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius of Loyola insists that love ought to be manifest in deeds rather than in words. Manifest in deeds rather than simply in words. And so it is with God. The God who is love gave us a gift. That's the second word, give. We were given not some lifeless thing like silver or gold, but we were given a person. Not an angel, not another patriarch like Abraham, not another prophet like Jeremiah. God gave us God's only son. Sometimes I know that's hard to understand. Sometimes it can be a very abstract concept and it's difficult to make it understandable or believable. That God gave you and me the very son of God. But God gave us. That's a strange verb, the verb to give. Because the gift was a baby, shivering in straw, all at once the son of the Most High and the child of a Jewish teenager. The gift was also an adolescent who called God his father and Mary his mother, who did everything an all-powerful father in heaven commanded and a carpenter father on earth demanded. The gift was a man who would scuff the dust of Palestine from one end to the other, because as he insisted, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, because he has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives, to restore sight to the blind. The gift. The gift was a God-man sold for silver by one of his intimate friends, delivered to his enemies by a cowardly Roman, whipped like a dog, crowned with thorns, pinned to twin beams of wood, and left to die between two criminals. The gift was a Christ raised from inside a rock by the power of God. The gift, the whole package. It was a gift freely given because we had no claim on Christ. We did not deserve him. A gift because he was born for you and me, lived for you and me, died and rose for you and me, as if we were the only men and women in the world. For you and me. God's gift, Jesus. God's gift is not something that is simply out there. Why did God give us Jesus? Well, even he said, I came that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. So let's focus on the third word, life. It is one of the most important four-letter words you will ever experience. There are different levels to being alive. To be alive on a sheerly human level is to think and to be free to have purpose, and to have passion. To that extent, all of us here are reasonably alive. But in giving us Christ, God gave us much more. God had much more in mind. Because we heard it in today's second reading in St. Paul's upbeat proclamation to the Christians of Ephesus. By the way, that whole thing was one sentence. Which at the time was the capital of the Roman province of Asia. God, who is rich in mercy, Paul says, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life in Christ, raised us up with him. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from you. It is a gift of God. 
It is a gift of God. For we are God's handiwork, Paul says, created in Christ Jesus for good works. What does that mean in plain English? Well, elsewhere, Paul put it more profoundly and much more succinctly. He said, you are a new creation. Meaning, you are radically different from what you would have been if Christ had not come, if Christ had not carried that cross to Calvary. But precisely how? Because we know what it means, what it feels like to be humanly alive. We can think, we can shape an idea, we can argue a point, we can listen to music. We can do things, we can work and play, walk and sing, love and laugh. But to be alive with Christ means that in the power of his passion you can think and act, live and love more fantastically than in your wildest dreams. We can believe what passes belief. We can accept God's word for the incredible creed we repeat every Sunday. We can hope for what seems hopeless. We are confidently expecting that God will be with us wherever we are in this life. We can love as we have never loved before because we can love as Christ loves us. To love without looking for what we can get out of it. To love those we don't like. To love the outcasts of the world. To love at all costs, even unto crucifixion and death. All this we can do because of the power of the passion. Because God is here. Because the risen Christ is here. Because we have gathered together in Jesus' name. And when we say, this is the word of the Lord, or when the priest murmurs, this is my body which will be given out to you, or when you cradle in your hands not bare bread, but the living God. Brothers and sisters, the passion of Christ did not end the first Good Friday. The passion of Christ surrounds us chokes us even. In every child who is unborn, in every young person languishing below the poverty level, in every woman who is sexually harassed, in every homeless person in our streets rummaging for food in garbage cans, in the racism that lurks just below our civilized surface. The death that envelops us lays a heavy demand on us, on us as Christians to share a risen life that is freely given on a cross. You and I have been graced, indeed gifted by God beyond our deserving, in love, in giving, and in life. Three words. Love, gift, life. By the God who so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life.